My name is Paul Oliver. I'm the owner of Pinellas Power Products. And this is a quick explanation of how to use a portable generator as a home backup for storms and other situations. Uh, the first thing I'd like to cover real quickly is if you're watching this video on YouTube, please look in the description section below for how to contact me. If you've got any questions or anything that requires a response, do not post it under the video because I do not monitor YouTube or any of the chat rooms. If you get in touch with me through my website, you'll get a quick response on it. If you've got any comments about the video, then go ahead and leave those, but don't put anything that requires a reply. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using the Duramax 16,000 watt inverter generator. Number one, 16,000 watts will allow you to run almost everything in most homes without having to be very careful and decide which items you can run and which items you're just going to have to leave alone. Uh, this generator will even start a 3,000 watt, uh, or excuse me, a three-ton heating and air conditioning system. Uh, so I'm going to be going ahead and using that. It also has a clean enough total harmonic distortion that it will synchronize with solar, but I'll discuss that a little bit later toward the end of the video. Uh, real quick and simple, the first step will be to take a power cord that's heavy enough for the rated power of the generator. Connect one end of the generator. Connect the other end to the home or target building, whatever that is, whether it's a business or whatever. So we've got the power cable hooked to the shore power inlet box for the building. The next thing is, this particular generator has the Pinellas Power Products Extended Run Fuel Kit already installed on it. What this will do is allow you to run the generator for days on end. You can hook, in, in this case I'm going to be using a 29 gallon fuel tank, but as soon as you use up this 29 gallon fuel tank, you can either switch to another fuel tank or switch to the stock tank while you go down to the gas station and get this refilled and then hook back to this so you can run continuously for several days. Uh, here in Florida, we have had situations at this location where I've been up to a week without grid power. Uh, so to hook up my extended fuel kit, take the hose that's included in the kit, notice the direction of the arrow on the prime ball, and that points in the direction of fuel flow. For a much better description, if you go to my website, <laughs> it covers the fuel kit only. Uh, hook one end of the hose to the fuel tank, hook the other end of the hose to the quick disconnect fitting on the generator. If your fuel tank has a fuel valve, make sure that that's in the open position. If it has a vent, make sure that the vent is open. Then come over to the generator and start it up. In the case of the 16,000 watt, each generator is going to be different, but uh, I'll go over it for this one. Uh, because we're going to be running it off of my remote tank, we're going to put the fuel in the off position, and that way it runs off the remote tank. Then we'll start the generator. Before I start it, I'll let you know that the next thing I'm going to do is make sure that the breaker is in the on position, but with the generator running, you may not be able to hear me. So we'll go ahead and start it, and then we'll check that that's in the on position. Okay, so this is the load center of the building. I've got mine set up so that you've got a display that tells you what the grid power, voltage, current, and so on is, what the generator power is, and what the solar is. The grid and the generator are both running right now, as you well know. Uh, the grid will not go out because we are not without power. Uh, this is strictly a demonstration, but if we were without power, your grid would be off. 
This is a generator lockout plate. What it does is it keeps you from having the grid and the generator turned on at the same time because they need to be in phase. If they're even slightly out of phase, you're going to let the smoke out of something. So the generator lockout plate prevents that problem. So what I'll do is I will shut off the grid, slide the lockout plate up, and then turn the generator on, and we'll be back to lighting. But the lights will be powered by the generator. So if you turn the flashlight on, you'll see that the grid is out, <clears throat> slide the lockout plate up, and now we're powered back up again, this time by generator. The uh, Duramax 16000 has a clean enough total harmonic distortion that it will allow grid intertie solar systems to synchronize with it. Uh, the grid intertie solar systems will require it to be 59.7 hertz to 60.5 hertz, which is really tight. The, uh, the standard single phase generators, there's only a couple that I know of that will stay that tight in frequency because they're a simple centrifugal governor. And a centrifugal governor is not that precise. The, uh, inner, or the uh, inverter generators, they generate power three phase full wave on either a delta or a Y wound stator. I believe this one's a delta wound stator, which is series winding. They then invert it to, or excuse me, they convert it to DC in a bus and then they invert it to 60 hertz single phase through pulse width modulation. So that will allow the inverter series generators such as the Duramax 16000 to be hooked up to your house and synchronized to a solar if you want it. Uh, let's see if the solar has booted up. Okay, so mine's still warming up. Uh, but at any rate, with a 16,000 watt generator and a solar array, you've got over 20,000 watts backup in this case. So I don't have to be careful about anything as far as what I'm running. I can run every single thing at the same time. Uh, as I said earlier, if you have any questions, contact me through my website, which is in a link below this video. If you have any comments, go ahead and feel free to leave them. And I thank you so much for your time.